Elias Pedersen, former Calder Trophy winner, rising star, and undeniably the face of the Vancouver Canucks. Pedersen's start to his career was filled with promise, but now there seems to be a bit of concern in the air. The numbers and eye tests suggest that something is not right with this former 100-point player since signing his lucrative new contract. Pedersen brought his struggles from last year into this season, and his game looks eerily similar to the struggling Elias Pedersen that we saw during the Canucks postseason run in 2023-24. Could it be the pressure of a new deal is finally weighing on Pedersen? Maybe it's a knee injury that for some reason people aren't really covering in the media, or perhaps he's maybe just lost his confidence in himself and his team, at least temporarily. Well today, let's figure this out and break down Pedersen's game to understand the financial, defensive, and offensive shifts that have led to this puzzling decline for a once top talent in the league. To better understand the somewhat decline that we've seen from Elias Pedersen, we need to take a look at a few things to further understand this player. First, his statistics, his player profile, how getting this new contract in a Vancouver Canucks market can really put a lot of weight and pressure on a player's shoulder as compared to playing in sort of a contract year with a team that's out of the playoffs. Then we're also going to take a peek at this knee injury that Pedersen has been dealing with since about mid-January last year and how this has impacted his training and just the way that he's able to play hockey in general. This should give us a pretty decent idea about what's going on with this player and whether or not he's seeing a regression or if it's just simply something that could hold him back for a few months and then he can return back to his true form. Now something we need to talk about here, 90% of the people who have been watching these videos have not subscribed to the channel. So what are we doing here guys? If you have been enjoying the hockey content lately and you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button now. I'm trying to reach about 20,000 subscribers at the end of the year. Right now we're hovering around 15,000 so I think we can definitely do this if we all just band together so hit that subscribe button now and without further ado let's look into the puzzling decline of this player to see if we can see any patterns so let's start from the beginning elias Pettersson surged onto the nhl scene as an electrifying talent drafted fifth overall back in 2017 this swedish center quickly became the cornerstone for the vancouver canucks his precise scoring slick playmaking and on ice vision made him a fan favorite in his first two seasons, in fact, Pedersen put up back-to-back 66-point -back campaigns, earning himself the Calder Trophy and a spot on the NHL All-Rookie Team in 2019. Pedersen essentially was considered a point-per-game player through his first four years. That is until 2022-23, his fifth season in the NHL, when the player completely took off having his first 100-point season where he scored 39 goals with 63 assists, nearly leading the Vancouver Canucks to their first playoff run since joining the organization. Following his first superstar breakout year, Pedersen and the Canucks were entering the final season of a bridge deal, but the team had yet to sign their 100-point player to a new extension. The season played out, and the Canucks wildly exceeded regular season expectations, winning their division title for the first time since the 2012-2013 season, and Pedersen was a large reason for this newfound success, having 89 points in 82 games. Seeing the impact that this player could have on the roster, the Canucks decided to re-sign him to an 8-year $92.8 million extension, keeping their franchise player locked down until 2033. So now that you have the background of Elias Pettersson, how he rose to stardom and earned this lucrative deal with the Vancouver Canucks, let's take a look back to about a month following his new deal and how his game had changed from the regular season to the postseason. The Vancouver Canucks had finally made the playoffs and everything seemed like it was going right. Through their 13 playoff games in the 2023-24 Stanley Cup playoffs, the one player who never really showed up was Elias Pettersson only managing to score 6 points and 1 goal in that stretch. Typically when you see a player decline significantly at any point in the season or during the postseason, there is usually something preventing them from playing at a certain standard. For Elias Pedersen, this was a nagging knee injury that was revealed following their Game 7 loss against the Edmonton Oilers in Round 2. Throughout the playoffs, there was definitely a gingerness to Pedersen's skating and often he seemed to be sweeping the puck with his shot rather than leaning into it with his weight, leading to pucks either missing the net or finding the opposing goaltender's equipment. Like most hockey players in the postseason, Pedersen never mentioned this injury until the team was eliminated. 
taking all of the criticism through their run without making any excuses. Following their postseason run, there was a lot of question marks about Elias Pedersen and certainly a lot of criticism. Something that he responded to pretty quickly in the media saying, I've been playing with a bad knee since January. It's been a nagging injury, so the longer it went on, the more pain I felt. According to Pedersen, the injury he sustained was back at the end of January, following his most productive month of the season, where he had 14 goals and 21 points in 13 games played. So how serious is the injury Pedersen sustained? This injury is called knee tendonitis, also known as patellar tendonitis or jumper's knee. It's the inflammation of the patellar tendon, the band of tissue that connects the kneecap to the shin bone. Symptoms like pain and stiffness can get worse over time, especially if you push through them to keep playing or training. And when you're competing at a pro level as an athlete, there's constantly going to be things that you're dealing with. But when it comes to your muscles or just your tendons in general, it's not always the best idea to push yourself past limits because this can cause further injuries or problems later on down the line. Now, if you watched the Vancouver Canucks in the playoffs, it was pretty clear that something was going on with Elias Pedersen. And while we didn't understand the full extent of the injury, it made it a little easier for me to kind of look at the player afterwards, knowing that he was dealing with something annoying like a knee injury. Now, when it comes to the knee, this can impact a lot of things about your game, your skating, your shooting, your ability to get back on defense, all of the above. So it's not really hard for me to understand why Pedersen saw such a significant drop off from January when he sustained the injury, then through the playoffs and at least the start of the season now where it seems like this injury is still lingering. So now let's fast forward to this season and how the knee injury could be getting worse for Pedersen instead of better. At the start of the year, Pedersen talked about how he had to train differently this offseason to accommodate for the pressure and pain that he was dealing with in his knee. Pedersen spoke to the media saying, I had a good summer. It was a little different. I had to train around my knee injury, but I feel great. It's like a nagging injury. It doesn't want to go away easily, but we figured out a way to work around it. When asked if he was feeling any pain, Pedersen responded with, I don't feel any pain right now or after practice. He said it's not a big thing. It just needs time, time to heal, time to rest. For reasons I mentioned earlier, this injury is not not a big deal. And let me explain why. Pedersen having to change his style of skating, his shot, and more about his game can be a big reason for his slow start. And based on the information we have about knee tendonitis, the only way to cure an injury would be to rest and take time off. With the Canucks being in a competitive division, and of course players just wanting to play through any sort of injury, it's going to be a bit difficult to just tell Pedersen to sit down, especially when this is something that he can play through. The only problem is if this continues to get worse, it could hurt the Canucks later on down the line. And who knows how this sort of injury could impact Pedersen in the future if he just doesn't give it time to heal and recover from what he sustained last January. So is Elias Pedersen regressing? That seems to be the biggest conversation or discourse surrounding this player. And I would say likely not. Anytime you're dealing with a knee injury or just an injury in general, it can be difficult to come back from it. And with Elias Pedersen, it seems like this is one of those injuries that's just going to continue to bother him unless he's willing to just give up some ice time, sit back and let it fully recover. Something I do want to point out, though, is just his character while going through this frustrating time. With the Canucks taking a significant jump last year and now having lofty expectations for this season, the team, especially their superstars like Pedersen and Hughes, get a lot of praise when things are going well, but also a lot of hate whenever there's any sort of dip in production. Through this stretch, I have to just say it's admirable to see how he's been able to simply play through the injury and try to adapt to the unusual circumstances. Pushing through any sort of injury can be challenging, but when it's long term and extends from season to season, this can be mentally draining on a player. So if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan, it's a good sign to see Petey play through some of these injuries, but it's also a good idea to really support this player as he goes through this because he's trying to impact winning hockey at the highest level whatever way he can while dealing with something that can really prevent you from playing at your best level. Hopefully Petey can find a balance with scoring while he's been dealing with this injury though. I think we all can agree at the end of the day he's an incredible talent and every hockey fan wants to see him fully healthy and playing at his best. But let me know what you guys think. What do you think the main reason is for Elias Pedersen sort of drop off in production? Do you think that the knee injury is the biggest culprit for all of this? Or is it something else like the weight of the new contract, heavy expectations, etc.? I also just wanted to mention at the end of this because I don't think I included this. 
Do you think that maybe Elias Pedersen should have sat a little bit last year after sustaining this injury? People are saying that it happened back in January. So what was the big reason for playing him through February, March, and April before the playoffs began when the Canucks were basically a lock for the playoffs at that point? Just something else that I want to hear you guys discuss in the comments below as well as everything else we talked about in this video. Again, make sure you like this one and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you guys as always for watching the video. I will see you guys in the next one.